Hi, David Montoya, and welcome to an episode of Stone Makers, because that's what we do. We make stones, whether it be retainer walls or water features or what have you, that's what we do. Come yeah. with me, I'm gonna show you what we got. It had an existing pond here, had a liner, and had all the things that you regularly do with the regular fountain, had the sand and all that. But it's kind of a mess. It really didn't really, it was kind of a water flow as a lot of the ponds, you know, they, you know, if you can, you, a lot of people do the, the, the ponds and the liner stuff. There's nothing wrong with those, but you're only subject to the rocks that you can get. What we're trying to do here is get more of a, uh, of a waterfall, bringing the water up and letting it fall down. So well, that's what we're going to do here. We have what's called the panel system. You know, GFRC, glass fiber reinforced concrete, has been around for a long time. Uh, they've done it in uh, everything from Vegas casinos, resorts, Disney. They all use this, uh, uh, the GFRC panel system where they mold a rock. Uh, they use a backer on it, they peel it, and there is an, imp an imprint of the exact rock. What we're doing is we've kind of changed it up here at Stonemakers. What we're doing is we're actually doing panels uh, that are same mold, same type of mold system without a backer, and we actually take the rock and mold it to itself. We have a real uh, a great product called Stone Rock, and it actually takes to itself, and we're able to do creations and all kinds of different things. The biggest thing is really having an overhang. And so with our new system, we, we get our frame system, we actually attach it to the frame and it becomes kind of the eggshell that goes around it. We use rebar to manipulate and make the rocks how we want to do, as you can see. This is, this is the drawing, you can look at the drawing there, that's what we want to do. With, they had the existing block over here and uh, of course it's next to the well, electrical's there. Uh, a lot of times you have to have the electrical installed and you always want to make sure that the electrical has a GFI, which is a ground fault circuit interrupter. What we're going to do is to just plug into the existing GFI that he has there, which really makes it convenient. We're going to tear this out. This side is lower than over there. So we'll put a level on this and make sure that the, the, the waterfall is level. Because we're using concrete, the medium concrete, it allows us to do boulders and make, make things how we want it, how we want it to look. Whether we're covering up a, a pump or we're covering up a, um, a, the front of the waterfall, we're able to do all kinds of creative things. Corey's going to start digging this out and he's going to... Uh, get all this old, it still has water and everything in it from put all the mud and everything. We're gonna get this all out of here, clean it out. So stay tuned to the stone makers. We're gonna make some stones. Hi, I'm Corey from Stone Makers. Particularly, we're gonna be about two feet deep. So I'm gonna dig down probably about two and a half because we're gonna come up with some concrete, about six to eight inches. All right, so now we got uh, our pond dug out here. Um, we actually ended up going about a foot and a half down because we are going to come up probably about up in this area around 15 inches above grade here um, with our boulders on the outside. So we kept it down here. We got a slight pitch coming down this way. Uh, we're going to keep our pump down here in this location and just work with the grade that we have here. All right, so we're back with our steel now. Um, we have number three steel, which is 3 8 inch. And we have these cut in 10 foot lengths to start here. So basically what I'm gonna do is work going this way. We're gonna put the steel in a grid fashion, one foot on center is typical. Uh, we're gonna have some closer ties once we start getting into the angles and everything. And what we're gonna do is just bring it right up over the end here and hook it right over into the grass and then we'll tie a piece connecting all the tops here. We're gonna get started on that now and we'll check in in a minute and let you see how it's going. But anyways, pair of linemen and come up at every intersection you wanna make a tie. Um, all I'm gonna do here is I'm just feeding the wire under, grab it with my pliers, bring it up over. And then I'm gonna work it away with my hand towards myself with the pliers. It's gonna keep that tension nice and tight. And then I'm just gonna wrap it around, cut your wire, pull back as you twist to tie. All right, so now that we have our cage tied here, we're gonna um, take some rocks that we just had laying around. Uh, you can use you know, bricks, stone is always easiest to find. Um, just don't use anything organic as far as like a tree branch or anything like that. But what we want to do is just kind of put them up under the cross braces here. 
lift this cage up so that it sits in the middle of the mud, not on the bottom. Well, here we are again the next day. This is the next morning. I got concrete coming here about 8 o'clock. We're going to put a product in that's really hydroscopic that really adds to the strength of the concrete. We should get up there around 6,000, maybe 7,000 PSI. Uh, 3280 PSI we've tested this stuff in 24 hours. So that's pretty good. Uh, so much so that we were able to make retainer walls and backfill them almost as the same day as we go. Not almost, but we actually have. Uh, for the city of Hookset here in New Hampshire and other places. It has no aggregate in it. And I know a lot of you thinking, no aggregate, that should be the strength of it. A lot of times it is, in this case, no. In fact, it gives us uh, uh, the, it has a fly ash, it has a nine, eight to nine sack mix. And what that does, it allows us to actually, it's this creamy type of mix and it allows, it allows us to not only carve, but to, uh, uh, to manipulate it for stamping, because we use a big, you know, I say that we don't use the aggregate. When I have a pumper, and this is a line pump probably going about 120 feet coming out to where we're at. When you have a pumper, you want to make sure that you have a little bit of chat and a little bit of aggregate. Uh, you know, almost uh, just to help it go through the... the it's going to help move all this rather than if you just have sand and cement, a lot of times it separates inside the, the pipe and, it's, and it could clog up and we don't want to do that. It's so a different want... type of set from what they had before. They, they yeah. saw this at a nursery that we had installed a waterfall and they said, you know what, we want one of those. And uh, so we came out and talked to them and this is really what we're going to bring to them. Uh, you see the drawing uh, earlier in the video, that's what we wanted to make it look like. And uh, I think we can do it. Uh, it's, it's really awesome that every waterfall is actually unique and different. And this one here is a, it's a signature. Everyone, every, everyone we built is a, build is a different water feature. It's, an, it's like a piece of art. So we'll be back. Well, our concrete's an hour late. That never happens, right? <laughs> Actually, it happens a lot. A lot of concrete plants, that's what they do. They just, uh, a lot of times they have all these excuses they give you as to why the concrete's late. Well, today, they really don't have an excuse. They just said, mm, it is what it is. <coughs> this is a line pump. And the line pump, uh, you know, you get out to 130, it becomes a little hard to push, especially when it's a drier mix. You know, for wall mixes, it's a lot, it's a lot more, a lot, it's harder to push that stuff through because it's dry, through because it's drier. But there again, we put a little bit of stone in it just because we're pumping it. He'll, he's going to put a slurry mix, which goes through here, kind of uh, lubricates all the lines, and that way the rest of the concrete just kind of goes in there. And once you already have that that slurry going in there, the whole thing just starts going all the way through. We're going to try to dump. We have a total of about nine yards. I think we have. It's a big pond, so we're going to need it. And a lot of we're going to need it in not just the pond area, but to build up the front area where the where the frames are going to go and that's where we're going to use probably a good two to three yards just in that area and then the rest in the pond itself all right well the truck got here and uh the first thing you do when the truck gets here is you check the slump don't just go up oh, i'm going to throw the wall builder in there because it's going to bring it down about a half a slump it's a it's a water reducing admixture so let's be up there and let's see what philippe has got up there uh three to three and a half inch slump uh, it's coming up here right in a second. I'm going to show you guys what we got going on. Concrete to come up. Yep. As you can see, just by the looks of it, it looks a little dry. So, you can feel it. So we're probably going to add a, we're going to add a wall balloon, probably uh, another five gallons of water, just to uh, get it right where we want it. Okay, so we already checked the slump. We saw what it was pretty good right by where we want it. What we did is we mixed the wall builder with a little bit of water. We want to put, we have 10 gallons in here. We have to put 10 yards right on here. We have eight yards, so we want eight gallons. So we mix this up into two, a gallon per, one gallon per uh, yard of concrete. So James here has it all mixed up with a little bit of water in it. And since it's hydroscopic, it actually is a humectant. So it actually draws the water into itself. So when you put that water inside the product, it's gonna start spinning and start reacting. Water reducing admixture. All right, so we're gonna put this up in the truck. Let that thing spin around here. All right, so what we're gonna do is have him spin that around for about 70 reps. Reps meaning revolutions. 
So if you want to drink that early in the morning, uh, you know, it'll make that concrete crystallize and stack up pretty good. So that's what we're going to do. And it makes it a lot stronger. Water reduce and admix. Remember, if you add water to the concrete, it's going to weaken the concrete. The wetter, the weaker, and the drier is going to be stronger. You like to do it dry, a lot stronger mix. He's going to spin that and all shut up. Temperature-wise, it's going to hit about 70 degrees. If it's hotter, you know it's going to set up quicker. Let's go see what it looks like on the other end. Ready? Mm -hmm. Now, see this nasty stuff that they just threw out of there? It's like uh, fibers. I don't know what the heck it is. But it is what this is, this is the slurry that they bring through the pump. They lubricate that thing and get everything kind of slimy for them, that way the concrete doesn't come in and dry everything up. So that's what we have here. We'll ask our pumper guy more or less what it does and what it does, but I'm thinking that's mainly what it's for. But we're throwing all the pump concrete in here. Eight yards, the tree should go through it pretty quickly. The thing about the pump is you can put that concrete exactly where you want it. Yeah. So Tim's going to show us, Tim, why do we put all that nasty slimy stuff in before we do everything? Well, that's the primer. It helps us seal up all the, all the connections in between all of our lines, all of our hoses. It also lubricates them so we can actually push the concrete through. I thought it was lubrication. I knew it was something. It, it is. Okay. Cool. And it just kind of makes that thing go on for a pretty quick. Cool. Absolutely. All right. Cool. Nice and slick. Well, we should pump this out pretty quick, eight yards, but uh, that's not bad when we're, when we're just going straight ahead on it. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. Not a problem. You want to have a couple of guys on the hose. Make sure you have two or three guys that can move that thing around. It's a heavy, you can hold that thing all day. It's pretty, it gets really heavy. So, and of course the other guys, like Philippe over here is actually putting the concrete up on a product in there called Wall Finish. And it's a product that has a little bit of this uh, uh, hydroscopic mix as well as an acrylic admixture that we add to it. So it's called Wall Finish. We put them together and uh, kind of acts like a plasticizer. If you don't know what a plasticizer is, it's also a water reducing admixture. But my thing is, is I want to be able to add acrylic in there because it really helps in the bonding of color uh, when color goes onto the concrete. That's called a covalent bond. It kind of strides the color, really gives a really nice finish. Plus, we're able to go, able to do deep texture, and that deep texture is what we're looking for. We'll show you that here in a little bit. Oil. Make sure that you put stone or sand or something underneath it, so that way it doesn't contract. And you know, it, when you get like a places in like in Dallas and uh, Texas and places like that where the, where the land dries up and then it wets, it, it gets moisturized. Uh, it, the moisture comes in again, so it expands and contracts. You got to watch. A lot of times they do uh, post tension concrete out there because of that. Well, here uh, we have a, a real sand base, so the water just kind of sieves right through. I'm not worried about that. Yeah, I'm not worried about heaving, I don't have any rocks or anything underneath there. I've already taken all those out, so it's almost all sand. So here, I'm able to pour right over that. I'm not worried about the pond heaving or coming up. What I mean by heaving, the frost getting in there and bringing it up. Here in New Hampshire, we get down to about 20 below sometimes, and it can really, you know, move the soil. Not worried about this here. It's like a big old bowl. If it moves, I got the whole thing going, but really, I have. that only happens when you have water underneath here. If I have most of my moisture that is sieving through because it's a real sand soil, then I don't have a problem with that. Do the walls first. Once I get all the walls done, we'll thicken up the bottom and make sure I have about a, oh, maybe six inches to even sometimes eight inches, in some cases, 10 inches on the bottom there. So it's really strong because of the, the density. And of course, the biggest part of the strength is that it's all a monolithic core, meaning that it's all one core. And here they're going to do the sides first. This is where all the, the forms are going to be stabbed into this. So they're going to make a big, thick pile out of this. There's eight yards. Should be more than enough to do what we have to do here. Here's the tower. Dump it. But you don't have to get too, too much of this. We coat these. Uh, to give it a little more longevity. And of course, 
I'm going to put this in here like that. The rebar will stab in here and come around and we'll make boulders and we'll show you how creative we can get really with this stuff here. It's a simple system, but it's, uh, I mean, today we'll have a lot of the panels already in. <clears throat> All right, what we're doing is we put the plumbing in and the plumbing is really simple. Pipe going from here, two inch pipe. So I get volume. I like to use two inch, inch and a half to two inch because it's volume. It's going to go in here, it's going to come up here and recirculate back in the thing. Real simple. I like simplicity on this. Over here, I'm going to put a valve on this. Close the valve. If I ever want to drain out the pond, I turn that thing on, turn the pump on. It drains all the water down there and brings it all out of here. Quick way to get, get the water and leave the water go onto the, the grass here. Real simple. Now I know the pond guys and all those guys, they want to put a uh, plastic you know, uh, thing down there where the pump sits in and you know they, they want to use uh, all the different trap, everything in there that they use. I'm not against that. But sometimes that can become a gimmick. You could put stone at the bottom of this thing and it filters better than all those things. They're better better than a, uh, uh, you know, a, a synthetic filter or whatever you put in there. Not that those aren't good. But stone is the best filter of all. It's nature's filter. So I, the pond's all done. Looks like our level's pretty good. We're gonna make some rocks out of this. Right now it just looks like a bunch of, of concrete. Uh, who needs to work out when you got that thing all day, right? Look at it. Huh? He's doing uh, he's doing back. He's got a little bit of bicep in there. And uh, what else are you doing, Corey? Legs, a little bit of legs in there for the squat. So he's kind of doing like that. You don't need to go to the gym. Just come to the concrete pour back here I got to watch the well here that we don't get against that but down here if you notice I got to get this concrete back here and if you put too much pressure on this thing here and it breaks down in the bottom you got a problem because then what happens it'll leak out of the pipe down you don't even know what's happening but we want to make sure that it's uh you know that you got pressure on both sides so don't put all your concrete up against this thing and, and you know have it crack down there or break it's it's schedule 40 so it's a pretty strong uh, uh, piece of pipe there but just to be safe for the uh, see what the grass is right there you are gonna have this mowing edge, you put as more right up against it. That way the, the, the uh, makes it a little easier when he's... It's okay. Uh, I'm gonna, I don't like to... Uh, you don't want your, your, your pond to slant up. You want it to be levels. Okay, it looks so much better when you have levels on a pond. Okay? How thick is the bottom of that? About seven, eight pretty, inches. Pretty good. So we're pretty... You know, it's a, a big, thick pond. And uh, it's gonna help as far as the strength of it. And it either leaking or any of that problems you're not going to have. Now ACI spec says that concrete should be almost waterproof on an 8 to 9 sack mix after you get a 29 cure. So this might leak or kind of absorb at first. But once you get your full cure on this concrete, you're, almost water, you're pretty much waterproof and that's what you want in here. We use a product I said it was wall finish. I'm going to show you how we mix it up. Daniel's gonna go get the wall finish. I'm gonna show you how we mix it a little bit with water. We dilute it down a little bit because it's pretty thick. We wanna mix it up really good and then dilute it in with a little bit of water and it should go to about a three to one. And then we will apply that. In fact, here's some of it right now. He's gonna show you how to mix it. But a lot of times if I do this, I wanna use uh, probably some gloves, um, especially with this, uh, with the wall finish. The wall finish has acrylic in it. Man, this stuff gets inside your hands. It's like, it just, they don't want to come off, so there it is. Now, you put it dust with the concrete. It kind of emulsifies that. Look at that, it just kind of sets it right down. And that way, when I go to put my my mold on there to stamp it, it's going to be really nice, really nice stamp. Really nice. Right now, I'm going to just uh, I'm going to use a regular plastic bag, regular trash bag, and I'm going to throw a little uh, release agent on it. Lease agent on it, spray it up there, and I'm gonna put this on the, uh, kind of just getting some of the rough stuff out of there before I texture it. Lightly. Get these crumbs out of there. Kind of seals it up, which would be, this is a nice texture. I wanna make it, this looks like a good rock texture. And we have these, uh, we use these, uh, uh, you know, also for making uh, molds. And I'm gonna spray this up with a release agent. Okay. And the release agent really kind of, you know, be a little generous with that thing there. And uh, 
put as much as you can on there and make sure. Now, I don't like it, I don't want a round boulder because the rocks were making them more square. So I'm going to let this stick out again. I don't like the round effect. Not that rocks aren't round. But in our application, they're, they're, they're not. Then I make sure I just get all the textures that I'm going to do in here. And I pick it up. And look at that texture on there. Isn't that amazing? And that will look like a... Uh, we know when I do the sides and everything, it's going to look exactly like a rock. And that's, that's kind of the goal to make it look like you put a bunch of big boulders in here. Now when we make the next rock, we'll use a different pattern. And, or you can use the same one, just turn it around, make different, uh, different overlays of it. You can use two together. Just get a little creative is all. On the side, I'll use a, a, a round trough because it bends. I'm able to get a, uh, a finish on this right here. And then of course I'll probably hit it there again. I'm going to use uh, the wall finish. Use the wall finish. See how it's kind of hard setting up a little bit? I'll get this wall finish and just kind of almost you can brush it on actually if you want. And my wall finish product just goes right up in there. Then I'll get this and it just kind of see it brings it right down, makes it more workable. And even though you got a texture on the top, you got all this now emulsified that you can actually use a, uh, a texture mat on this here. This really brings it right down. Even though it was setting up, now it's all workable. Okay. Uh, texture mat, I can use the same texture mat. Uh, since it has a real similar texture there. And I'll hit it with the release again, just to make sure I don't have, to pull a little bit of concrete out of there. It's kind of wet, yeah, no, and it's, you know, I don't want it to stick on there, so. I'm gonna get a little bit of this. I know, it's Hold that up there. And I'll just get all this in here, like that. And all of a sudden I have a texture on the side there. See how nice that is? Now you can carve rock and you can come pretty good to, you know, I see some guys do really good carving. But this right here is a, something that you can do reproducible. You can, you can texture this thing right there with the mat and it turns out really nice. I'm going to get another edge. And even on this rock edge, I can get a, you know, Well, it's starting to set up. Boulders are just, they're texturing really nice. A few separations I gotta go in there and cut just to kinda go. I kinda, I'm, I'm my own artist, I know what I want it. So I gotta stab the frames in here now. So this is what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna make these two, this is gonna be a higher part of the, the, the waterfall, and then down here I'm gonna drop it down in here and have a fall on that side. So I'm actually gonna have a fall from up here into that rock and then down there, and this one here I'm gonna have a straight drop going down in that one. Different from the drawing, I think eventually, uh, I think they'll... Every waterfall, you can draw it up, but sometimes it comes out a little different because, uh, because of the creation, the way you set it up. You can come as close as possible though. As you can see, it's as you can see, it's really starting to set up. It holds my weight. Maybe you're on the pipe. <laughs> no, no. It's it's uh. I mean, you're probably in the pipe. pipe is over here. It's it's just it's going to spill under that there, spill in the front there, and then spill right off the all off the frame and rock. But I'm trying to get it look like separation. Like here, these two rocks here are way too. Like right here. And these 
to look like separate locks. And I might come around there and actually make a coping on the edge because they're so thick. Here again, this looks uh, just too tight there, so I'm gonna. The other rock. It's called again? Yeah. It looks silly. Uh, no, no, it's not. Better when you stuff in that. Separate. Right. Okay. See there? Oh, now that looks oh, Joey. just night, night and day. Uh, it's just wise, everything. So I'm good. I'm going to put a little bit under here. I don't need to really texture it much. Yeah, it's already pretty much textured. I'm going to call that. Do my thing. But really nice, did a great job. Corey is finishing the inside. And uh, it looks like the boulders were placed down up inside there, you know, and maybe a, you know how they do with the, you know, with the regular pond guys, they put uh, the liner underneath and then the boulders around it. This is all monolithically part of the whole pond. And so, Corey, what are you doing there? You got the wall finish going in there? Uh, yep, just brushing the edges here, trying to seal everything up. And then, uh, Plaster in the bottom, trailing it up, and then doing a brush finish on the bottom. Trying the to the wall seal finish, it right? With the wall finish, yeah. yeah. getting any of the pores or anything like that. Yeah. Closing them all up, making sure everything's pinched towards the pump. Checking, make sure these things are rigid with my head every two seconds. Uh, right now, we're just about done with the pond. It's looking good. They have probably. Uh, so how many yards? About seven, eight yards here? Corey? Yeah, about seven. Didn't yeah. even use it all. Uh, we had we were gonna order ten. Didn't really need it all. We used uh we got about seven, eight yards. They're almost done with the pond. Look at that pond. Is that looking nice? It's kind of weird with them frames sticking out of there, but man, when we turn those into rocks, it's gonna be pretty. Here's the thing, when you see the pond shows or the pond guys and all those things, they're all about the fish and the, the environment of the water hunt guy. We're all about the resort. We're about the way this looks so you can have a barbecue and enjoy this thing. If you want to take care of fish, that's your business. I don't mind taking care of fish, but it's kind of like taking care of other animals, right? Love animals, I have a couple of dogs, but man, I don't want to babysit fish. And not only that, I don't worry about the animals around here that eat those fish. Uh, you know, I mean, so, you know, leave the fish to the game and fish, right? Leave the, <laughs> we're gonna build resort stuff, stuff that you can enjoy, clean, nice water features that you can sit out here and enjoy the way it looks. You want to add fish to it? Be my guest. As far as I'm concerned, I just like the water features and the resort effect in a backyard. That's my two cents on the uh, pond guys. Huh? Yeah. yeah fish. I think the best thing, or when you're building these things, is to have guys that really know what have your vision and know what they're doing, and they never stop. Uh, Felipe in the back over here. He's on this thing because he knows that that's starting to set up. So he's really got to get. Remember, I said if you leave it like that, it stays like that. He's going to make sure he emulsifies that and textures it, so that way all of it looks textured. You know, here you get these nice when it was when it was fresh. It's easier to texture, and so then you get back over there and it's not as much texture it's because nobody was paying attention. To it. But all these guys textured it all. They all got on it. They took and did their business. When you have guys that know what they're doing, it's a blessing. It really is. Corey, he's on the pond. Look, he's already three quarters of the way through the pond. The guy's over there, James, he's cutting that up. And before you know it, underneath here, even though you think you're gonna have panels over it and you don't think it's important, uh, Philippe is gonna go ahead and finish up the bottom of that and just throw some wall finish and just kind of finish it up to tighten up the top of that. It really helps uh, uh, as far as the bottom goes there, even though we're adding panels on it. Another thing over here, they did the edge like the guy wants it and they're texturing and they're detailing. And that's what James is doing. He's coming in and he's detailing the heck out of that to make it look like it's separate rocks on there. And look at that, see that difference? All those little things make all the difference on the final outcome of how this looks. We're ready to put the, attach the panels on there. The guy's going to bring the panels a bit. But this is what it looks, it's supposed to look like. And uh, so I set the panels, these, I mean, uh, the uh, frames according to that. Now, when we put rebar in here, we will actually form out the boulders. Uh, here I have a boulder right in here, which is going to be a, a rock across this. Here, the waterfall falls here. So I want it to fall off of here and onto this and then it's going to scatter over here. And the reason I want it over here is because they want to get a view of it from the patio over here. So that, we'll start putting the rebar in here. We're basically, you can weld it. We're just going to tie it with, uh, you can tie it with ties if you want, or you can tie it with uh, wire ties. 
However, just to get that thing caged, and we're gonna get it kind of uh, rigid, because we cross the rebar and everything, and you'll see how we do that here. Well, it's coming right along. They have all of the rebar, just about all done. And the more they put under, whether it be under or across, they'll cross it. Everywhere they cross it, they tie it. And every time they tie it, it makes it more rigid and gives that cage effect. And it nice is it's, a, it's pretty much a veneer. From over here it'll look like separate rocks all stacked in there and that's the, the, the effect we're trying to get. When we're putting panels in uh, and inverting, what I mean by the word inverting is we put two together so it looks like a crevice in between the rocks. Like It'll give that separation. If you tie them all together it looks like one big old giant rock. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look natural and the natural look or to give it that natural effect is to invert rocks like that like you have separate crevices and cracks like you do in the mountains. And that's kind of what we want to do with this. So we have rocks underneath it, rocks in here. And notice how they, you know, if I have a panel on the edge here, I'll tie it right here on the edge. Okay, I'll just tie it right here. Uh, if I have, like in the middle here, I have a rear on the middle, then we put two holes and we'll wrap the wire right around there. But right now I think that's about it right there. The panel doesn't even go all the way back, but we'll, we'll mud it in there and it'll, it'll stop so you won't even see the, but it'll give that effect as if it was two different rocks even though at the, at the top we're going to make it go all almost one piece. Same here. This is two separate rocks. I like how this piece is coming up. If this piece is coming up, we're going to bring it down like that. <laughs> so the water will come over here and break over the top of this. They, want it, they don't want it too boxy looking. They want to get away from that boxy looking type of thing. Another thing they would do, we use uh, screws like this. Remember, we're just trying to hold it in place. When we mud it, it actually keeps it all together. So look what he's doing here is using deck screws inside of concrete. Uh, sounds crazy, but we'll go over that with mud and you won't even know it there. It all makes it one piece anyway. They wire some of it, they use deck screws, holds it just as good. I want to hold it in place when I put my mud in there and stuff, it'll take to itself and we won't have to worry about anything else. Same with over here, and here, all this, all up in here. We'll put another piece in here. You can actually put another piece right in here and deck, you know, and screw that thing, put a, a, a hole in the wall and then just put the deck screw in there and holds it right together a little bit here. And uh, we'll, we'll just tie it into that a little bit there. And uh, let's, let's, no, let's make a rock out of that. Let's make About 9 o'clock in the morning here. The guys have been here since early this morning. Already started patching everything together. And what I mean by patching, they use the same material. Uh, but it's a, it's a patch control. It doesn't have as much uh, fibers, not as many fibers inside of it. What we're going to do is we're going to cover all of these, like, gaps. There's all these gaps in here. Because you look and they go, how are you going to cover these gaps? How do you fill this all in? You know, in the old school GFRC, they used to use a, a scrim, put it over it, try to get the thing attached together, uh, put a bonder, you know, things uh, to try to get it to really take to itself when you had the Type 2 and you had the polymetric... Uh, uh, you know, polyplex and stuff like that. And that's how the old GFRC, heavy GFRC was made. Um, the difference is, is now you have a, a, a really strong uh, hybrid mix that actually is, uh, it takes to itself. So I can just use the mix itself as they've done over here. Notice over here, uh, uh, Victor is getting some of the mud there. See, it's kind of a clay type of a mud. See that right there? And what he's going to do is he can patch right over any of this and actually make... If we were gonna, he can put a piece there or he can put it, make his own panel there. So he'll sit there and put that right over, right over the wire, right over the coated wire, right over whatever. And all of a sudden, he just bridges the gap. 
and it sets up within about 15 minutes it'll be hard you can see it'll be hard it's already hard this is just 10 minutes in and he'll put that all over here that over the whole thing <clears throat> not only will we put it on but we'll texture this as we do this we're going to texture this uh, he'll cover up the little screws the the deck screws you know where we sheet rocked the panels in <laughs> You ever thought of doing a waterfall this way? It's the craziest way to do a waterfall. Well, it's close. I mean, we took, we kind of took the idea from the old GFRC where they would, uh, you know, pretty much do the same type of thing. Here, we're, you know, we're, we're patching a little differently. We're doing, we have a product that is just really, you know, if you have a good medium to do things, you can, your artist is as good as your medium sometimes. And so if you have a good medium or a good, good paints to work with, a good canvas, and of course, a great vision. You can create. You can create just ama amazing things. So we're excited about this. And let's go back from this side over here and take an angle and see how this is looking. And you will never. You won't really be able to see where the where the bond are. Where, where they putting these together? See, when they mix this, they always put the line through. If you're going to put a uh, when you put a patch on here, they they continue the line. So that way it doesn't look like it's oh you put a big bond there and you put the two together. We don't want that to look like that. So when they do this, he'll 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 cut it and. Do different things to make it look like separate pieces. They'll use the brush to kind of, uh, the brush, what it does is it kind of fades it into the existing rock there. See, the, there's little pieces in there. And that brush just kind of gets you, fills that all in there. Now, it looks a little bit, but look at that crevice in there. So you can actually use the this, or you can actually use another, uh, another piece of, uh, little piece here. And this has texture in it, so you can actually texture. You can use a little texture in there. And that little bit right there adds so much to it when it dries and it colors. When they scratch it and do everything to it, you can see that it'll pick up a lot of the textures. So you can take your time and get a little creative if you want. And use this as a texture tool. Call me All right, so now, right now I'm just doing the piping. Um, you know, we have our two inch line coming straight up from the bottom of the pond. And uh, we now did it right here. We just want to be inside a little of the waterfall. You don't want to be all the way in the back. Um, right here, we teed it off because we want to distribute our water uh, through a couple different boulders. So I got a tee right here. And uh, I nined it up to this right boulder. And also, um, I came out about a foot and a half and nined it up so I can distribute my water to uh, my uh, two left boulders. Timex one or something. Ain't no difference like that. No, do not film me right now. Huh? Yeah, I need help. <laughs> this is a bad video. I can't help. Okay. All right. Did you see down in there? Looks nasty. They're making the panel patch mix. Right, Jimmy? That's right. What, um, you, now, what, you, what are you doing, bro? I mean, I know what you're doing, but let them know what you're doing. Okay, so we're just making the, the patch component for the for the waterfall. Dude, what's up with the hat? <laughs> um, Don't we have so, like a stonemaker hat? What's this? Is that, is that polo? polo? Yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so <clears throat> basically, um, we're, we're not making whole bags at a time because we're working... Just a few of us are patching, so we don't want it to set up on us, and we want to really detail it. So um, I, uh, all I do is I add a full you cup know, that, of water. That's a really good thing that you said, because a lot of times they make a full batch, and then the thing sets up, and because mm -hmm. it, it sets up quick. This stuff is like 10, yeah. 15 minutes all sunset, and you, and you can use the wall finish or other, pro yeah. you know, to soften it back up and make it nice. But uh, if you're only going a little at a time, and what do you say? I'm trying to detail it. He's not just trying to mud it. He wants it to look so authentic. So it takes them a little bit longer, but, but right, like you said, I mean, you could mix a batch and throw it up, but if, if it's not going to look good, then there's no point in doing it. So basically, I'm going to add. I just add a, a whole cup of water, which is two pints of water, and then I add a, a half a cup of polymer, and um, then I just add the stone rock patch to consistency. I mix it up, and once it's at consistency, it's ready to go. I'll bring it over, and we'll start mining. Believe that. Believe that. Muevele, Jaime, You already put that. Are you confused? I am confused. He's confused, folks. But you know what? He's going to put it together because he always does. So we're... we're <laughs> There's the stone rock material there. This is the... Uh, the... Undervalued. 
yet called overpriced, but it's really not. It's really something this good is actually underpriced. But you call it what you want, concrete guys out there. Mm. And all you guys that like the car, is that like a turbocharged mixer? What kind of mixer is, is that? Oh, well, it's the operator. It's, uh, it's, the, it's the operator. <laughs> it is the operator. <laughs> Notice how the guns, they pick it. Notice how he picks it up. Look at that. Look, oh, look at that, the cut. <laughs> you will want to learn like that if you want to make waterfall like this. Otherwise, you will never do it. <laughs> Show them, Jimmy. Yeah. Now, down here, Matt was doing a. Uh, this rock here, we want to make this rock look like it's not just attached to the original concrete here that we put in. But I want to make it look like it's sticking out, like it's a rock hanging up on another rock, like we did here. See that? So, what I want to do is, they'll, they'll mud up under here. I don't want to, you know, mesh that together to this. I want it to be separate, like it looked like it's hanging up over. Like over there, you know, you can see the, the skinny panel, but we're going to put mud under there to make it look like it's a thick part of a rock hanging over another rock. That is the key to this. That's really the thing. The goal is not just to patch it, to make it look like real rock. And that's part of the thing, is making it look like rock is that we, when we seam it, that the seams are not just molded. What are you doing here? Yes, we have all the rocks and everything, but we also have to put, also, it also has to be, you know, you gotta forget, you, we forget that we got water coming on this thing. So here, we're gonna fill all this in on here, and they'll fill all this and make sure. So a lot of times when you're making the panel, you forget that there's little pox or little holes inside there. Sometimes the water will go through there. And, and th we'll leave a little bit of the back so when they turn on the water, you'll look through it and you can see if it's leaking and like that. And that's a good way to tell. And uh, Felipe from the back there, he'll leave a section out there so he can say, everybody will look through it and say, oh, there's a little leaking here or whatever. Because it's hard to catch, capture all of it and seal it up right away. These panels are waterproof and they're thick. The product is, but a lot of times when you make it, they don't really, you know, it's, it's good to get, uh, when you make a panel, to smooth it over real good on the backside. So that way it seals from the backside and that's what we want to do. Here, I got water coming over. So let's say the water comes all over here. Well, it's lower here. So here, it's going to spill here and it's not going to come over here. I don't want just a bunch of water on one side. So what, what's great about the, the panel system is that I can level it off. I can manipulate the water to go anywhere I want. <clears throat> Back in the day, when I, me and my dad used to do waterfalls out of real rock, you had to go get a rock and just move it a certain way. And, and it, a rock this size, first of all, would have been really hard to do. Besides that, when you did the, the rock, to try to lean it or try to post up underneath it. And a lot of times we would uh, do it with concrete or whatever. And so we'd set it there. And a lot of times over time it would move and the water would change. Here, I can manipulate the water exactly where I'm going. So if I have this thing level across here, the water is going to fill up there. And it's going to scatter evenly over this thing to make more of a draping effect, more of a, a nice uh, a sheet effect of water, even though I have a few rocks in, in here like this. So it looks natural, it looks uh, a little bit of cascade, but mainly a nice big drop here. We're gonna get that, because I, 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 you know we have the underhang over here, the overhang, I can get a nice, this overhang allows it to get more of a, um, a, a base type of a, of a sound. So this mud's kind of setting up. It's been sitting in the sun a little bit. So uh, I'm just going to add a little bit of water and remix it so that uh, it sticks to the panels. You can see it starts coming back to the way it was before. Here you go, man. There you go, Jimmy. We just we mudded this earlier today. I'm already standing on top of it. What I'll do is I'm gonna I'm gonna water seal the very top um, where where the water is gonna be. So. Basically, I just mix a wet slurry with the, with the patch and I'm just going to run it along and water seal all this stuff up. You want to do this to the whole area that water is going to be flowing on. So as soon as you put the, the slurry down, you're just going to want to brush it. Kind of just seal it, seal it all up. 
so that no water is going to leak through your panels. And um, another thing you can do is when you finish this up, you can bag it to kind of give it some texture just so it doesn't look, doesn't look so fake. Um, but you want to do this to every single um, spillway on your waterfall so that you don't have any leaks. Yeah. You kind of added the side up here to keep the water from spilling down, kind of in the just make some separation in between these two boulders. Makes it look really nice. The water's gonna come off real even. Here in the front, we're gonna have a- Right now, guys, uh, we're wrapping up with this waterfall. We got maybe one or two batches left to go till the whole thing's mudded. Tomorrow, uh, we're gonna come back and paint this whole thing up, seal it up, get water running, and it's a done deal. All right, so what Victor's doing right now, he's just vacuuming out the pond. You know, we wanna get it uh, nice and clean. We're gonna run it before we even paint it, just to make sure our water's flowing wherever we want it. Um, so we're just waiting for him to uh, clean it out. Then in a second we're gonna show how we're gonna assemble our, uh, our pump, just so you guys know how to do that. Yeah. All right, so Felipe's gonna hook up this pump right now. Um, we're just using a basic sump pump for this water feature. Uh, it's a 3650 GPH, just gallons per hour. Yeah. And basically all we're doing is we put a rubber boot on here. The pipe's gonna 90 into our pipe right there. Uh, this is a float. This is kind of a custom thing that the homeowner wanted to install um, for himself. So we're gonna drop this pump in. Drop it in here. And keep in mind that this is a reducer. Uh, it's a two inch to a one and a half. So I'll be able to fit that on there. Um, we're just running it for right now, so I don't want to tighten anything up. I just wanted to see how it's going to flow. So, just going to hook it up. And I already had measured it before the video, so, you know, it fits nicely already. We should be good. We're at two. These are not reservoirs. Basically, we're going to cap these off. Water's going to hit and spill out. All we've done is come up 90 over and 90 directly right down. Over here, same thing. On this one, water's gonna hit down, flow forward, and also off the left here to come onto the secondary boulder over here. Spill off the face there. Um, we don't wanna cap these yet. Right now, we're filling up the pond, as you see. We want this water to run, see where it goes. We can make any adjustments. It also allows us to check for any leaks up here. If we need to reseal anything around these pipes, We'll be able to notice that before we put the cap on and have to take it back off and so forth. Um, back here also, we're just patching up the rear of the waterfall. This will all be done. And we're gonna run water here in just a minute and we'll check our flow and make our adjustments before we color or anything like that. All right, so we're about to plug it in now. And again, this is gonna be Doing our test run, trial and error, this thing. We're gonna have Felipe plug it in. And again, we're just gonna check our flows, everything that we need to adjust. Always do this before coloring, anything like that. It's gonna save a lot of time and effort. So go ahead, Felipe. How is it over there? It's leaking, so you're losing water down here, but that's all right. So we can start over here by looking at this. Our water flows, the amount of water is pretty good. The spill there is good down here. So you can see all the water is coming over here. So we're gonna end up mudding this here to adjust, push the water over here also. So we'll probably level this off over here. Walk over here, look over here. Oh. Up here, we're not getting a lot of flow, not enough. So we'll end up, we have a little water coming over here. We'll block this off, 
get some more water coming this way. We're losing a little bit too much going over there. Over on this side, we're looking pretty good. We're getting a little bit of splash off of this end right here, coming out too far. So we'll end up putting some up here, block that splash. But this one, very minor details to fix it up. I just took like a kind of walk around and like dip in the top. All right, so we're going to adjust this first. So all I'm doing is building this up, kind of level this off. So actually over here, if you take a look, um, we just wanted this water to be a little more spread out throughout the, uh, the panel. So we raised this level up over there where Corey is. Um, it was a little too high, it was leaning more towards, uh, it was favoring the, the left side more. So uh, we grinded, we grinded the side down and uh, now we're kind of leveling that off. And over here, now we're just, uh, we had a couple leaks in the boulders. so. Now we're doing a slurry mix and we're going to uh, just, just give it a good a coat just to cover up any little holes or seams or anything like that. Okay, so now that we've adjusted all our water flow, fixed all that, um, we want to build the capstone here. Now we have two pipes coming out here, so we want to try to cover them both at the same time uh, we do have a split in the front of the face here so we don't want to make it too complete we want to give some variation in here so it doesn't look like it's connected in the back and just split right in the front um, one of the major things to look for when you're doing the capstone is to not just make a bubble over the pipe it will look horrible um, it'll change everything from the face view so what we want to do is kind of casually come up and go right over instead of building, like I said, that bubble here. We want to make it nice and flat, make it look like it's part of the stone, not something that was set on top as an afterthought or uh, as like we like to say, a, like a turret on a tank or something. It just, it doesn't look correct. So we're going to get going on that, cover these up and get this going and then we'll check the water flow after we've got that on. and should be ready to go. All right, so as you can see, we put our capstones on, uh, on both sides. And now we're gonna plug it in, run the water again, see if our patchwork on the front and everything, everything, see if it flows right on all these. And if it's a go, then we're gonna finish our pump house and be ready for coloring. the pump house here so this elbow right here uh, we never glue this on 
for removal. That way the homeowner can just pop that right off. We've put this piece of panel in here. We screwed it over here. We're gonna mud that up. And now we're gonna close it back in to make it a piece of this rock right here. Now the top here, we're gonna make a removable lid. That way they can easily pop it off, remove the pump to winterize, or if they need to clean the pond or whatnot. Right here, again, this is just the float that the homeowner specified that he wanted in here. So now we're gonna come in here, close this, we'll make our removable lid, and we'll be good to go. Well, the guys look like they finished it all up. The flowing, you can hardly hear me now because they're, they're blowing all the, uh, the air, all the junk off, the, off of the uh, rock so that we can uh, finish it up. Now, look at all the jagged edges and everything, kind of, kind of the inverts, it goes in and out, and that looks amazing. This is an amazing looking waterfall. So they're gonna finish this up. We're gonna get all the dust and junk off it. We have some water from testing it. We're taking the water off of it, and then we're gonna start coloring it. So they put a base color. Corey's got a base color. What do you got on there? Fawn and honey. Fawn and honey, what kind of uh, dilution you have? Uh, it's about three to one, three parts of water. Three to one. So, it's just kind of a light color. These people wanted it kind of light anyway. And I'm going to give a granite effect. Uh, <coughs> we're going to stamp it too, right? All right, so we're going to scratch it. We're going to do all the things we can to make it look as much like real rock as possible. Base color just pretty much everywhere. Uh, he's kind of just spraying it on there, getting a little bit of coat on everything. A uh, little sprayer. He has one of the little garden. I think they're about what eight, nine dollars for those garden sprayers. Yeah, give or take ten bucks. Yeah, cheap garden sprayers. And the customers thought that we weren't going to color it. They thought we were going to leave it gray. They thought it was just uh, right, guys. Yeah, they thought they go. Oh, it's nice now because they saw the texture. And I thought, well, we haven't finished. Oh, are you going to color it? <laughs> but we were like, uh, yeah, we are. So what's nice about this is that think about this. The color that goes on this stuff is actually uh, kind of adding a covalent bond because the color is is an acrylic based color it's uh made you have acrylics there's a plasticizer in it to keep it try to keep it emulsified almost like a hydrogenation would be in food sometimes and so we're adding that color but now you have a bonding because you have the acrylic to acrylic and you get a covalent bond it's really nice yeah. scatters it, it gives more of an effective uh uh because i have that our photon product in, in, inside here you get some colors that's lighter and darker, and that's what you want, uh, a, a rock. It's kind of a light color, a diluted color, but the nutmeg, it has more of the rock look than any of the colors that we have. And it gives a real, kind of an earth tone, uh, not just earth tone, but kind of a, kind of a field stone look. That, if you look at some of the rock around here, it probably has more of that. People think it's gray, but it's more of a nutmeg. Nutmeg is a, a really, a real neutral color, uh, but it's uh, it's a dark color. As you can see, it's not coffee. It's not uh, brown. It's more of a well, it's nutmeg is what it is. <laughs> so it, it it lends itself to an iron looking type of a color. Kind of darkens it up a little bit. And it darkens it up, but we're going to add the black and white. So even though you say, well, gosh, you could leave it like that or color it like that. And a lot of places, maybe back, uh, a lot of the rock looks like that back west or, you know, maybe in the New Mexico, Arizona, um, uh, even, you know, North Carolina, South Carolina. Here, up here, they, they like the granite. And it's kind of, a, they like that white granite. And really, none of it's like all granite here. Look at the rocks around here, the fieldstone rocks. this with the black I got the bigger black dots uh, to make it look like that granite stuff and so here in the front I don't always get the inside of there done first a lot of stuff over sprays underneath there and uh, make sure this thing slumps up really good gives you a better droplet and then I'm gonna make this just kind of see the droplet not too big not too small but it's kind of just takes it all down pretty good starting to set in it takes a little while for that color just to set in there and get a real good nice color uh, but we're gonna add a little bit to it which is uh, just solid we don't even dilute this stuff and that is the moss green
And this here, I'm just going to get a, a brush. Kind of just scatter it on. Okay. Now, if it drips a little bit, then just stab it. Okay. So if it happens to you don't want to drip. Better to look better without it than to have a drip there. So, so I'm gonna get a little bit of this. I kind of get the brush a little bit, and just kind of dot it a little bit. And now I have a uh, moss color in there. Not on everything, but a, you know, maybe a occasional rocks here and there just to give it that effect. I'll even throw on these these back. And if you look over here, we did some moss and stuff. But up here, uh, one of the guys left a panel that comes out like this, and it, it's all right. You can leave it like that. But I think it looks better if we bring a panel down. So in the meantime, we just put some rocks there. And of course, our customer didn't like the rocks because they they looked kind of stood out. And I, I agree with them. They kind of stood out, so we just painted the rocks. Go figure. So now they look like they're blending in, but we're gonna take those out and actually bring it down. But for now, uh, we have a lot of the dark and the light and it looks really kind of uh, real natural to the effect of the, the rocks that are around in this area here. Uh, now you can come back from over here and it looks really nice. We'll put water in it. As soon as that fills up, give about 15, 20 minutes, we will have a, uh, a waterfall running. And before we do that, we're gonna scratch it up. We're gonna give it, when we scratch it up, it kind of gives you that tumbled effect that the rocks were, you know, scratched against things. We wanted to give it a, the, as much realism as possible. That's what we're doing here. What the guys are doing now is we're adding a little bit of sandpaper on here, and this is about a, a 60 grit? 80 grit. 80 grit, so 80 grit. Uh, and what it does is it takes some of the color off, scratches the concrete, and what it does, it gives it that tumble look. And uh, you look at it from here, you see that dark in there, it just kind of, it hits all the all the profile. Anywhere there's texture or profile, it gets it and it just kind of gives it that real effect. I get the corners. I always like to get the corners. And it just kind of it looks like a, the rock that you brought in was, you know, scarred and taut, you know, when you Tony wants a little bit of color, right? Now, if it was mine, I probably put a little more color too. It's kind of I would say not bland, but it's kind of, they, they wanted that granite color. And around here in New Hampshire, I guess you could say, well, it's the color of the personality, you know? <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding, Tony. Not Tony, he's from Boston. He's got, that, uh, he's got that color in his personality. So that's what we want to do down here is to get a little more color in that. So we're gonna, we're gonna let's, just, let's just add some. I know we're waiting for the girls to come and see if they liked it or not, but they kind of wanted all the light stuff. And I, we like to throw color and oxidation in there. So. Uh, Hey guys, can you get a little amber? Let's throw a little amber on it. Uh, throw it in one of the sprayers, or you know, just a spray or a cup. Spray? Get a cup. Yeah. Let's just stab it in there a little bit. Or, or we got one of the sprayers here. Yeah, I got a spray. Here. Yeah. Just so. put it in another one. Does more? I always have the customers do the own electrical because we're not electricians, and so they're they're going to yeah, put the box in there. So for now, he's he's, he's plugging that thing in, and and now let's see what it does. You know, when you first put the water in there and you run the water, the water is going to pick up a lot of the polymers, not only from the color, but from the, the panels right here. So you have all this polymetric product in there. It's going, to, it's going to make suds and stuff like that. All you do is let it run for a couple days, maybe a week, clean out the water, put fresh water in there. Remember, this concrete down here, ACI specs that a nine stack mix is going to probably turn waterproof, according to their specs, within 29 days. So it's full cure. It should, you know, it should really do nice. But right now, it's probably going to take, it, it might lose uh, water here and there just through seepage. But other than that, it should be all right. 